Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Hey biggies, welcome back to Friday 5pm. First up, an apology for missing last week. Everything got on top of us again. It's amazing how busy you get in lockdown, isn't it Brad? It is, it is. Um, You'd think we were doing nothing, but somehow there always seems to be a lot on the go these days, Johnny. Yeah, it's like, I couldn't tell you what I did last week. um, I could tell you what I didn't do, and that was the Friday 5pm podcast. (laughs) You were uh, were recording some some videos for uh, our friends at um, Bigfoot Festival, weren't you? Yes, so yeah, I was working with We Are Beer on Friday, and they are... Uh, they're the guys that run at London Craft Beer Festival, Edinburgh Craft Beer Festival, Brist, uh, Bristol Craft Beer Festival, and uh, uh, Beer Central, which is their Birmingham Craft Beer Festival. They, we were doing a live show to commiserate and celebrate the fact that it should have been their first edition of Bigfoot, which is their music, beer, and food festival. So we did a live stream, and I was working on that. I was probably about two bottles of wine deep uh, and trying to run a live stream of um, a load of DJs. So that very much got in the way. But actually, most of what got in the way was was our video from that week, which uh, I'm delighted to say is the biggest video we have ever done. Way. I mean, it's very exciting, Johnny. Yeah, I mean, it was it was just crazy to release a video. We we usually get, um, I believe it's about four thousand views in the first twenty four hours. We got that in the foot like by the time I woke up the next morning. So in the first twenty four. Um, and it's now sitting about 23, 24,000 views, uh, which is more than our videos tend to sort of plateau at by about, well, about 15,000 views. So it's just been absolutely crazy. Um, and we're so pleased because of the plans we, we're slowly working on to get homebrew uh, a much bigger part of what we do. Uh, that was really heartening to see. Um, and also it proved a point uh, to my partner Heather that a car scale tap in the house is a good idea <laughs> that was why you did it wasn't it Johnny you just you just wanted any excuse to make a pub in your home I mean I was pretty upfront about that in the video as well <laughs> I was like I'm sick of not going to the pub I want a <laughs> pub how do I get a pub at home um, which was the genuine origin of that video just being so desperate for a car scale and as Brad as you'll, uh, you'll attest it was it was pretty close right fucking fantastic i could only uh drink one of them sadly because i i drove over to you in north london to uh sample your wares but mate i was blown away by it and i I just thought to be able to brew that in your kitchen pour it in your front room on some kit which is you know quite rudimentary just shows a lot of skill and you know the flavor you got in that glass was amazing so I doff my cap to you and once we are able to get back together person to person, I cannot wait to be home brewing with you. I think it's going to be such a fun journey. It's going to be, yeah, a lot of fun and and we're going to be taking a different approach to it. We're going to keep it sort of narrative based and get real experts in to give us advice because as much as I'd like to take credit for how good that beer was, you know, I was starting with a professional, uh, incredible recipe i got um wonderfully cared for fresh hops um from uh hukin's hops and got well looked after by malt miller as well so um i can't take all the credit most of it goes elsewhere but also i'm a great home brewer um <laughs> so <laughs> big up to so greg well you missed as... greg out there but big up to greg at five points for the recipe 
Well, yes, and his his endless advice on top of his recipe was yes. was important too. Um, so as well as having loads and loads of views, we also got an absolute megaton of comments, over 500 comments across the two videos. Um, so we, we try to read through lots of comments every week as they come in. Uh, Brad and I were just scrolling through them. There's so many wonderful, friendly, lovely comments saying how much they, they love the content, how much they loved my face particularly when <laughs> I was pouring in that second video because I was just, I was losing my mind. Like that was not acted. That was the first time I poured it. And that was uh, not what I expected to happen. So that was genuine shock and surprise on my face when it worked. Um, but yeah, Brad, do you want to start? You found a comment in the in the first video we should read out. That's right. So uh, from one Brad to another, this comment really tickled me and uh, made me made my heart warm a little bit. This is from Brad Y, and he said, "Great video, guys. First time home brewing has made sense to me." Little smiley face. So I just, you know, I, I think what we, we kind of want to try and do is make what we're doing with home brewing more inclusive, um, like we do with, with the Craft Beer Channel, with all of our content. We kind of want to make it so anyone can enjoy it if you're, you're just dipping your toes in or if you're a bit more advanced. So um, it's nice to hear that it's 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 sort of shone a light on something to somebody that they, they didn't sort of grasp before necessarily. So um, yeah. There were pleasure. some other comments that were saying, I think, and, and I think there were long time subscribers of the Craft Beer channel who, who kind of said that they didn't fully understand how beer was made up until that homebrew video. So there's a lot of power in the homebrew video, even if you're not intending to brew, just to see the hops and the malts going in and the process of how it happens. Um, and particularly with Car Scale, we've got so many comments of people going, I didn't know that's what made Car Scale different, that it it was naturally fermented in, in a second container um, and poured kind of kind of manually. Um, so yeah, we've got lots of comments. So that one kind of sums up just saying, I know it was quite an involved geeky video, but I learned a lot of basics from it, which was, was great to hear. I think that's great. You know, it's we can, we can, we're kind of, especially with that one, you were certainly learning along with with the viewers. Uh, I don't think you, you at the beginning of your journey, you didn't necessarily know that you were going to have such a banging result at the end of it. So genuine surprise at points in that video, genuine elation. Um, and I know I was just absolutely blown away by the beer when I, when I got to try it. So just a great outcome, man. I've just remembered I had to edit out uh, a little piece I did to camera, which was just before the pour, in which I explained that... Um, so everyone was coming on Monday, which was Beer Day Britain, to taste the beer. And I was saying... So I was doing that first ever pour um, only a couple of hours before people were due to arrive. So if the beer wasn't any good... And I'd smell a whiff of acetic off of it at one point, which I was terrified by. But I think, hope, luckily, that was some spilt beer on the bag, not in the bag. Um, but so, yeah, with hours before people were arriving and only two days before I was supposed to publish the second video, I still had no idea whether I'd produce something drinkable. Um, so it was, it was, it was, yeah, squeaky bum time. Really Flying was, by the but, seat of your pants. As yeah, ever. thinking if this if this pour doesn't work, I don't have a video, and I have four friends coming over. I think Brad, you probably even left. I sent you a picture of the beer, like going, "Thank fuck, it's worked," <laughs> and you'd already left your house. Yeah, I was in the That's car. How... I, I saw it flash up, but I, I couldn't check because I was driving. So lucky, l yeah, lucky it was right, and lucky that image wasn't just of a flat beer and me going, "It's acetic, the... don't leave the house." Oh God, that would have been. Uh... Less, far less enjoyable. Far less enjoyable. That, that would have been. I've been like, hi, Brad. Nice to see you. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you might as well go home. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, I mean, at this point, we're kind of blowing our own, our, our own trumpets. Um, so on the second video, there were lots of lovely comments as well, mostly about my face. Um, and and I, I look like a fucking madman, if I'm honest. <laughs> when I look back <laughs> and I edited that, I was like, you look weird, Johnny. Um, but another thing that was a theme in the comments was, like, when I started doing this, I kind of assumed people had done it at home, and I chatted to some homebrewers who had. I didn't realise there are, particularly outside of the UK, loads of homebrewers who brew car scale because they can't get it in whatever country they've moved to. Um, so we got loads of comments from people saying that they have, like, car scale festivals with their friends. So all their friends who homebrew wherever they live now will make bag-in-box or uh, corny keg real ale. And all bring it for one day of the year. 
Wow. Um, How exotic so, are we talking? Where, where, what sort of parts of the world? Uh, most of those were from Australia and America, which makes sense, sort of quite big. Oh, and France and Spain as well. So the big expats, expats right. expat communities, yeah, like British Amazing. people moving abroad for work or because they're retiring and then going, oh, shit, there's no best bitter here. Um, so, yeah, we had a comment on the second video from Barry Cranston. Excitedly, I thought I thought it was Brian, Brian Cranston initially. <laughs> it's not. He's not a home brewer. Um <laughs> But uh, he said he my is. home club aims to have at so, least... He is a home brewer, Johnny. He he just makes meth. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> a very different form so, of home brew. I interrupted you, Johnny. Continue. So he was saying that his home brew club aims to have at least one hand pump club night each year. Um, so they're, they're, um, they're, they're making a, an annual event out of this, out of having home brewed Cars Gale uh, at their home brew club. And I think that's absolutely amazing because we think of car scale as this niche it's actually about 13 percent of of all beer that's drunk in the uk so it's, it's by no means a niche um but it is trickier i think to do at home and 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 people want to give it a go and and, and show that they can yeah um, man. and have a whole bloody cast festival around it. it's awesome i want to go down to that one i think i think barry was in cornwall possibly Mate, I just had an idea, which would hit, would be an excuse me. for us to get back up to the Arctic Circle again. What if we What if we gave uh, cask ale to the Mo, to the, the Mojon craft beer community, and we had a <laughs> we had a cask festival up in the Arctic Circle again? Wow, that'd be pretty that'd special. That'd be super cool. I'm not sure they'd understand it. I don't know. Maybe they. I'm not sure whether they know about car scale or not up in the Arctic Circle. We need but, to get uh, in, in contact with our uh, with our fixer over there. That'd be cool. I did think if we ever went back a third time, it would be amazing for us to bring our home brew to them. Yeah, that should certainly happen either way. Definitely. Um, yeah. So yeah, that that is uh, those are the last two weeks covered on the Friday five pm podcast. Some of the biggest biggest weeks we've ever really had. What with the the two massive videos and and the, and the live stream. Um, if you want to see the work that I did um, for Bigfoot and for We Are Beer, it's on their Instagram now, so you can see me sharing beers and wine with. Uh, I was, I mean, I was speaking to some pretty famous, much loved DJs, and me being very much into indie rock that makes you cry had no idea who these people were. Um, so that that's quite enjoyable. I've had endless messages from people going like, what, are you are you drinking wine with Dynamo MC? And I'm like, yeah, who's he? And I, Dynamite the, MC. The guy. Dynamite MC, not Dynamo. Dynamite MC. See, I even got it wrong. Yeah. You know, that's uh, apologies to Dom. Um, <laughs> I now know him as Dom the Song because he's also a sommelier uh, at the Clover Club, um, oh, the Clover Club in, uh, in East London. So he is a multi-talented guy. Um, so yeah, you can, you can see that interview and lots of other ones I did, uh, over on their IGTV, uh, on Instagram. I think that's at Bigfoot Fest, but cool. if it's not, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, so, uh, this week's video, uh, was, you know, it was, it was a home, home bake video, not home brew video. Uh, I've been for many months trying to perfect an all beer bread. So there's lots of beer breads that use a bit of beer, um, but none of them are sort of just tip this bottle of beer in mixed with flour. Um, so I was perfecting that, and that involved getting a, another of our, our good and famous friends, uh, Alex from uh, French Guy Cooking, which is my favourite YouTube channel, uh, to help out and give me all the advice that I needed. And we ended up with a really lovely... Uh, decocted lager loaf that i made a blt with that was this week's uh video that's also going down an absolute storm um although releasing it on the hottest day of the year and then spending 20 minutes just talking about um about uh warm places hot ovens frying pans for crispy bacon um was uh it's a whole lot of heat well it was not what mm. yeah i'm just sweating thinking about it to be honest um but yeah, that's gone down really, really well uh, as well. Uh, and we're going to hopefully do a bit more cooking with beer as well because it doesn't get the views, but it definitely gets the interaction. Our Imperial Stout Brownie recipe, probably once a week now, I'm getting tweets or Instagrams from people who have made it uh, and are chuffed the bits with it. Um, that's easily the, the best homebrew 
uh, home cooking video we've done in terms of response. So if you guys have any ideas of stuff you'd like to see us come up with, um, then 100% let us know. Um, and then next week, all the news, um, we've got a very, very, very exciting video, which we're not going to give too many spoilers about, but we are brewing again, and this time with our pro Patreon supporters, our original pro Patreon supporter, uh, Glenn Affrick. Hmm. It's it's kind of top secret. I feel like we've we've shown maybe posts on Instagram or whatever, but it's fucking exciting, man. This the beer that we've made is is quite something. Um, it definitely appeals to my sweet tooth. Um, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say on the matter. But what what a journey we've had with those guys making the beer. I think it's I think it's a great a great thing that's happened. Uh, we will, uh, off the back of that, be doing another of our live show tastings with Glen Affric uh, in a couple of weeks. We'll confirm the date as soon as it's all nailed down. But you'll be able to buy the collab beer that we made with them and also a bunch of other delicious beers that we'll taste through uh, with the brewery. So that's going to be uh, a date for the diary as well. And then after that, we're actually out of videos, Brad. So we need to... Uh, need to put our heads together and come up with some more content because I've I've basically run out of lockdown <laughs> ideas. Well, and thankfully, lockdown is starting to end. That's it. We're now allowed to uh, stay in a travel lodge together so we could <laughs> we could have a little uh, journey somewhere, potentially. Uh, we, could. we could go see know, someone. We could go to see somebody. Wow. I mean, I didn't think I'd be able to say that this year. But, Johnny... You, you were really that pessimistic. We could probably go and see someone. <laughs> you make it sound like we haven't left the house i mean that's basically true but uh yeah we could go to a brewery and do you know what is our bread and butter which is profiles on amazing breweries mm. um so yeah maybe we'll if you guys have any ideas of who you'd like us to go visit maybe we could get a little shortlist together uh the campsites are opening real soon so even if the hotels are all booked we could, could go on a little camping road trip oh yeah um it would be great to see some of the breweries because obviously we do a video every year very start of the year in January of breweries to watch out for in 2020. Uh, I'd love to see how all the people we mentioned are getting along because they'll have had a much tougher start to their their business careers than they'd have wanted. And throwing support behind them would be, I think, a really lovely gesture. Um, and also they've probably got lots of delicious beer that's just waiting to be drunk. Like it. Like it. So, yeah, maybe we should make that a name to go go see the guys at the start of their journey uh, and help tell their story and, and make sure that they make it through to a a, a second year of brewing because that's not a guarantee for for all breweries right now. Mm. Mm. Sad times, but um, we yeah we've had some sort of good news in that the pubs are kind of gonna be allowed to open, kind of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so social distancing has been reduced to a meter. It's terrifying times, and I really hope the pubs are able to sort of keep a lid on it and keep people safe and stop a second spike. Because I think over in America, where they opened up, you know, before us, it's looking bad. It's looking like a second wave is coming. Um, so I really hope that all all drinkers and all publicans act responsibly, and we we get to keep those pubs open because it, it's vital for mental health um, and for our economy. Yeah, don't you think we've gone down? Uh an alternate timeline or something, Johnny. It doesn't feel like reality, does it? It's It's been such a strange, unprecedented year that, um, you know, nothing like this has happened for pretty much 100 years. Um, mm. It's kind of crazy. Was it 1918, the Spanish flu? No. Yeah, I think it was just after the First World War. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a pretty um, much 100 years since the last yeah. fucking and, huge... And- Crazy the thing. effect of mm. this this virus has been much more intense because the world's so much more connected now and it's spread so much faster. I mean, there's a really sad story. So I've been writing a story about what beer culture is going to look like in the future uh, for good beer hunting. And I won't give away any spoilers because it's nearly finished and it should be a really interesting piece just about how drinkers and breweries are going to respond. But uh, through doing the research, I found a brewery uh, in Bavaria a 400-year-old brewery, so it survived the Great Plague, the Spanish flu, two cholera outbreaks, two world wars, um, and then coronavirus got it, and it's closing. So that that's sort of how unprecedented it is that we're talking. That's the, the severity of the situation, that the Great Plague that killed millions wasn't as, as bad for business. 
um, as coronavirus has turned out to be. Man, um, that is worrying, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I, I'm currently, I'm still living in disbelief. I still, there's still a little part of me that just thinks I could just walk out the door and go to the pub. Even now, months into it, still my brain just hasn't quite gone, like, you can't do that. And I have to check myself and go, well, no, what are you talking about? You haven't been able to do that for months. It, it, it's very weird that our brains can't quite get around it. Uh, I say our brains, my brain. I'm not trying to speak for you, Brad. You're probably more normal. I wouldn't call myself normal by any stretch. But, no, uh, I, I misspoke there for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I just, like I said, I feel like we're, we're, we've gone down a dark timeline in an alternate reality because it's just just so crazy everything that's going on, you know? But anyway. Yeah, this is the darkest timeline. We've it's, just it's, got to It's a, a Rick and Morty episode. Exactly. We've got to hope that, you know, something's going to happen. Maybe one of us is, is, is uh, dreaming. And we're gonna we're gonna wake up, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that was just a bad dream." But anyway, um, <laughs> that'd be nice. That would that'd be, be nice. nice. The, the nightmare's nearly over, and the good news is we are releasing an Imperial Stout collab in a couple of weeks, so everything's gonna be fine, people. Everything's gonna be fine. Um, so yeah, we'll be back on Wednesday with our collaboration video with Glenn Affric and back hopefully for another Friday, 5 p.m. Um, and then the pubs open. So I just want to say, guys, please, please be safe. Please be responsible. Please be nice to the staff who have had a really fucking rough time and will probably have a pretty rough time on that Saturday as well. So tip well, be yeah. good. Uh, and in the meantime, stay safe. We love you. Bye bye. The Bubble Podcast is brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer Channel. Head to youtube.com slash the Craft Beer Channel to watch this week's video and over 400 more exciting episodes. If you love what we do, please, please, please do subscribe and even join our Patreon at patreon.com slash craft beer channel. Love and beer.